Today we got another busy day. We're gonna start working on the planter for spring 2023. Unfortunately, the planter is in that shed right there, buried behind about eight inches of ice like this. So we actually won't be able to get the planter out today, but uh, we're gonna start working on some of the parts in the shop. So what we're adding to our planter is we're adding clean sweep. So that's uh, an active uh, row cleaner system and speed tube, which is looking like it's gonna be a big plus because right now it's raining and we're supposed to get another four inches of snow. And today is March 31st. So we're gonna hopefully get all that stuff ready. So when the planter does come out of the shed, we're able to start putting it on. So we're gonna start tearing into some of that stuff. What I'm doing is I'm taking these row cleaners so these are the row cleaners. They don't have the side spikes on. And I gotta add this. This is an air, air cylinder. Um, add that and put it inside here. So what these row cleaners are gonna do is go on the front of the row unit of the planter and then clear out the trash and debris. I'll show you when we get in the other shed kind of what that's gonna look like. So now I just gotta install all these cylinders on there. And then when I get them all done and get it all installed in the cab, this is the control module where you can control the cylinder for the down and the up, depending on how low and how high you want them. Here, I'll show you how we got some done here. That's gonna be controlling this action here. I finally finished putting these dang row cleaners together, 24 of them. The trick is, See, this one is a little bit higher than this one. So those ones go on the left side of the planter, then these ones go on the right side. So overall I put in, I think it was, let's see, 48 bolts is what it was. It's these ones down, you see that down in here. Um, so that's one of the planter upgrades we're making. The second one, which is probably more exciting, is we're adding uh, one of these to every row. This is called the speed tube. So. Our planner right now, CCS planner, or a central fill planner, CCS stands for Central Commodity Station. So you can identify those by planters with big tanks for seed on the back. So the seed gets loaded into the, the, the bulk tank. Then each one of these lines brings the seed down to the meter. So here, we'll look at number nine. The seed goes from there in each individual meter. From there, the seed enters the meter. So once the seed gets to the meter here, it then on the inside of the meter gets sucked, there's a vacuum, it gets sucked to this plate, so each seed is held onto each one of these holes, kind of like so. Then that seed, once it gets off the plate, that plate runs over the singulator, and the singulator is going to knock off the excess seed. That way there's only one seed on each hole. And then the seed will fall down into the seed bead tube where it's going to get tracked all the way from the disc in the meter. So all the way from that hopper, the seed's going to have its place all the way down to the ground. All right, so to add the speed tube, the first thing I'm doing on the planter is I've got to add these little steel shims. Uh, currently there's plastic ones, but they're not long enough, so I gotta add those. So that's what I'm working on. And the boss man's adding these called expansion hubs. So basically it's for, normally we just have one thing getting run off of uh, the SRM or the, or the module controlling each individual row unit. But now since we're gonna be controlling the meter and the speed tube, we need multiple. So think of it as like a uh, electrical zip strip. So here will be the power in, and then each one will be power out. So we'll use one for our, our meter, one for our speed tube, and then if we ever add furrow force or smart depth or anything else to the planter, we'll have them other outlets. So now we just gotta get all those put on the planter. It's ideally you'd rather have this plug going up. Let's see if you got it on. Like that. It says, put it on the parallel arm. Using the included zip ties, hold, we actually didn't get any zip ties. Hold the hub tight to the inside and cinch in place. Choose a parallel arm that makes the cleanest and most convenient. Make note of any liquid products. We 
got stalled on the planner. Uh, the meter seems like it needs to sit up a little higher now that the speed tube's there. So it's past five o'clock. Got to make a phone call on that tomorrow. So figured got a little bit of time here. Jumped in the tractor. Figured might as well go into the display, make some updates. Um, every year, it's usually every season, so every spring, every fall, John Deere comes out with some kind of like iOS updates for the tractor. So just got to plug in the thumb drive here and make some quick updates. Uh, usually it has some relation to like GPS or auto track turn automation, something maybe related to the app. So I'm going to update this uh, 340 I'm in now and then head back to the back of the shed to update the 9620 and then call the night. The trick to installing the software update, so there's actually two USB drives down here. Uh, started with this one, nothing came up on the screen. Let's see if I plugged it into the second one. Boom, this comes up, so then just gotta hit, tap, uh, install software. Um, I'm gonna install from USB drive. You can do it from the cloud, just takes a little bit longer, so I like to do the USB drive, speed things up. Uh, internet re reception where we're at is not the fastest, so install from USB drive. Um, <clears throat> these updates are just for the display, and then it's gonna go through, check for the, the software updates on the USB. Uh, also can do the same thing for the receiver up top. So uh, on this tractor, we got to start fire 6,000 receiver. So to do the updates for that, very similar, go through the, the Gen 4 display, and then you can update it for that. But for this growing season, we're still on 4.6, so we didn't have to make any updates for this year. Back in the display, it's showing all the updates I got to make. Install all, accept, and then it's going to go through and install them. So pretty quick, easy, simple process once you figure out how to do it. Um, to get the software onto the USB drive, go to www.stellar support. You'll see the, the, the updates on there, Go and it'll make you download Square Manager. Then open that, run that, save it. I think the, the data stick, or USB has to be at least 8 gigabytes, formed as a, a FAT32 file. Save it on there, bring it to your tractor. Pretty, pretty simple, easy process and hopefully makes for an easier uh, season for you in the cab. Finished updating this ADAR 340 and the Starfire 6000 Globe to the newest software for this spring. Um, right now it's currently 803, 804 now. So we'll hit this one in the morning, update the, the, the display in there. The Globe's already good, I double checked that. So do that when I'm working on the planner. So thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.